So what's up guys, this is Metro GM, Variety Game Streamer on PC and PS5. And, but this is not a gaming stream, it's gaming related. But this is just an unboxing stream for content, mainly for content. So not just game streams, I pretty much eventually will do anything and everything to get to you. And today we're well, tonight we're going to unbox Ryzen 5 5600X and the X570 you can see it right there in it. X570S Aorus Pro AX. I believe the AX is just the updated Wi-Fi protocols and bandwidths. So that's why there's an AX, so it has Wi-Fi capability, unlike my two pre or three previous motherboards that didn't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, this one has. So yeah. I spent around 600 total to buy these and am saving what little money I have left for buying a discounted GPU, preferably RTX 3080. Uh, it'll take a while. I have noticed that the PC sellers that I've been stocking for months now have started dropping the prices of lower models, meaning 3070, 3060, and obviously the lower ones, the 1600 series as well. But the 3080 and the 3080 Ti and above, the models 3080 and above have, haven't been affected yet. Their prices are still static, except for the occasional like 5% to 10% off on sales. Their non-sale prices are still steady. So I have to wait further before I could, before I start buying. So I, for now, I repla I'm replacing my CPU and my motherboard, assuming that they don't, you know, have defects. And we're gonna find out on the screen if they have to fix. So first off, let's try the Ryzen 5. This is just going to be a short stream. It takes longer to set up because I don't have my own studio or private room to do these kinds of things. So it takes a while to set up and I have a lot of micro adjustments depending on what I see fit. Like for example, on this table. I'm just borrowing. Uh, the other side doesn't have space for my legs, so but that was how I set it up first, and then only realized later that the orientation of the table was wrong, so I had to remove all of the components on the table and flip it. So that like that, and then there was a part on the green screen where it fell almost on my computer and my camera, so the thing is intact. So those are a lot of the things, a lot of the, what I would call growing pains of a streamer. I've been streaming for almost two years. Actually, next month is my streaming anniversary since I started streaming. With not much to show, not much progress. So yeah. Trying as much as I can to avoid editing videos, but providing different content. Because I'm just a lazy fuck on editing videos. I can, just that it, I, it's, I think it's even more bothersome than work. <laughs> yeah, when you have to check frame by frame every video, you know, it's kind of taxing, which is why you'll see or if you haven't yet, you'll figure out or discover that other big time streamers have their own editors because editing is a pain in the ass. But it pays off, but I just don't like putting in the effort too much. Eventually, I'll edit some videos. Like, I do have a plan of editing some Bloodborne boss fights when I cheese them. Maybe in Elden Ring as well, but primarily it's just go I'm just focusing on streaming games. 
Sorry, I forgot to turn on the lighting as well. So that's another boo-boo on my part. Yeah, sorry for the late stream. So for those of you guys who are looking forward to the stream and just gave up and went to bed, well, you can just catch the vlog streaming on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, right? Okay, I think we can start. Well, I still have some second music going for the next 40 minutes or so. The stream won't, won't take as long. Oh so yeah, I have two cameras set up. Just that, I have to remind myself to buy a better tripod for my camera next time. For my cell phone camera right here. You can see the stand is a makeshift stand of boxes. So that's it. What else? Okay, well, we can start the unboxing. I removed the sticker early, and this one was from China. The motherboard's locally bought, and the processor is from China. Okay, this is Ryzen 5 5600X, 6 core, 12 thread. Um. I don't really know any of the features, but the, the, the usual stuff like you can overclock it, has multitasking capability, bigger cache, or thread, or core, or processing, higher frequency, whatnot. Compared to my old, almost two year old Ryzen 5 2600, it's a massive, it's a massive boost, massive upgrade. I'll explain a little bit on the reason, reasoning behind the motherboard, but for now let's just focus on the Ryzen 5, so this is it. And the, most of the uh, space consumed in the box is for the usual uh, CPU cooler. That's, I believe, called... What's that name again? Stuff? Wraith? I think Wraith. I think it's called Wraith. So it's the generic CPU cooler provided with the AMD processor. But you can also buy from your local sellers a tray type. By tray type, you mean... The CPU cooler is not included. So that's... So while I'm unboxing, I'm also teaching you guys the basics because I don't really know the advanced stuff. Not a not an avid fan of RGB liquid cooling or overclocking, but I just want all of my parts to be in top notch for uh, top notch specs. That's about it. There's... I seriously believe that overclocking reduces significantly the lifetime of the PC part or the device and it also diminish the value, the resale value which is why I avoid overclocking as much as possible so this is the tray if you are buying a tray type from seller You'll probably just get this part. Maybe an extra box, but not the original box. Just the tray. It's called the tray. Sorry, not renting the camera right. Hope it's readable. I think my cameras are clear enough and I'm at 60 FPS. Plenty, but 60 FPS. Uh, ignore the streamer, just focus on the part. So yeah. I haven't inspected for defects, so I can check right now. Yeah, we're still on the first music. Mm -hmm. Well, I could open it. Does obviously you can open it and get something out of it, but do not damage. I don't think in a tropical country there's a problem with static. I believe it's more on those with colder climate or those with four seasons. 
countries with four seasons. That, that you have to be extra careful with static, but here in the tropics, not really. Just avoid getting it wet or scratching it, that's about it. same form factor as the other AM4 mother uh, CPUs, processors, nothing. So it looks like it's good, so I could now provide a review for my seller because they did ask explicitly to have a review. So far so good, so far so good. Just have to have it have a follow-up review in case it doesn't work. I have enough experience to not ruin the pins. Yeah, so it also has the sticker here. Horizon 5000 series, the latest non-thread ripper pro line of processors, and it's supposed to be for gaming. I believe the X is for gaming. So this is the tray type with the sticker Ryzen 5 5000 and this is 5600X and I don't think it's way too expensive to buy the 7, the 5800X 5, and I think it's a bit overkill because as of right now even with my current specs I can stream 60fps the problem, the main motivation for replacing the CPU for me was because I can't stream my webcam at 60fps while streaming games at 60fps. Uh, the, the CPU couldn't handle it and the game that I'm streaming crashes. It happened last week, I think. Yeah. This is the main motivation why I bought that stuff. And it also it was on sale. Around $40 off. Yeah, so this is the tray, the processor, it looks good. I don't think there are bent pins. Can't count all the pins, but looks like nothing's missing. And this is the, as I've said, the Wraith Stealth Cooler that is pre-packed with the processor. So it, it's provided by AMD themselves. So I don't have, but I don't really recommend this kind of cooler because for one, it's the vertical type, meaning that the dust also flows through at your CPU. So that's from my experience before. I also used the, the Wraith self cooler, the default, the factory one provided by AMD. And yeah, it gets dusty really fast and your motherboard will also get dusty faster. So what I did was I bought a separate CPU cooler. That is the orientation of like this. So instead of blowing the fan into the processor, what I what my fan is, it it's upright. It blows wind out of the CP, out of the PC, but the heat sink diverts the temperature from the processor to the fan and then the fan blows out the heat out of the PC. As well as the dust. So it's less dusty on the motherboard. I'm not really fond of liquid cooling. For one, it's expensive. And number two, I am not really bothered by the noise generated by the fans. It's actually pretty quiet. Even on the very intensive programs and games. I'm not, no, not really bothered by it. Okay, I, need, I think I need to adjust the camera as well. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I think these are it, and then in the other box, so in the remain, rem remaining parts is just the manual and the important please read kind of thing. Yeah, installation instructions, if you can read it. Installation instructions and please read. Um, it's saying 
some. Hobby. Because none of it is in English. I think this first part is in English. Yeah, just reminding that you need a motherboard that is AM4 compatible. That's it. Scooch that in. Yeah. And then there's the manual. That I don't really need. I'm pretty experienced with AMD. I have never used. Oh, wait. The first family PC was Intel. Yeah. Intel Pentium something. Like three or four. Not sure. But for my own uh, desktops, I've been using AMD ever since I got my first PC. Ever since I bought and built. PC, it's always been AMD CPU. Yeah, so that's all of the parts. So, as a recap, it's right here. There's the AMD Wraith Stealth Cooler for the CPU, the tray with the processor and the sticker for that binds you, and then just some manuals. That's all of the contents in the box. Nothing different from the previous boxes I've got. From AMD. I always favor them over Intel because Intel, you know, uh, got complacent with the competition and over the years got uh, overtaken in terms of innovation by AMD. For example, the sizes of the semiconductors in the seat in the processors. That, uh, it took Intel a while to get it to the 7 nanometer range, I believe. It took them a while. Longer than AMD. That's why I don't like Intel. They got too complacent. And as a consequence, they got overtaken in terms of stock, popularity for their product. Next, this is the Gigabyte, this Gigabyte X560S Aorus Pro AX. So, I can, I can first teach you what it all means. So Gigabyte is the manufacturer. It's not the OEM, but it's manufactured by Gigabyte. Obviously, the technology is still NVIDIA. X570S is the chipset. Um, it's the most expensive and the most feature-rich chipset for AMD motherboards at the moment. X570 is the chipset, the S added to the end, that's why it's a different color, is that it means S for silent. So the S stands for silent. Because the original X570, without the S, has a active chips, chipset uh, fan attached to the chipset of the motherboard. So apart from the separate CPU coolers that you attach to your motherboard. The X570 has its own motherboard, has its own cooling, active cooling, active fan for the chipset because it heats up. So there's some inefficient cooling that it required, that the motherboard required a separate and independent and built in set fan. Which would, which I say would be another point of failure if ever the chipset, the, mo the motherboard's chipset heats up and the fan doesn't work, then that's another point of failure, which I don't really want, nor do, does anyone want to consider. I've done my enough research to know that, well, for most, it's not a problem, but I don't want to risk it to have an extra part to die out or break, and then it's going to be a chain effect. So, if there comes a time that the motherboard becomes too hot, the chipset in the motherboard becomes too hot, and the fan doesn't run, the motherboard could uh, just die. Well, obviously the your PC session is going to die. It's going to turn. Dash. Your PC is going to shut off first. Then you have to troubleshoot, and the other parts could get damaged because of it. So, yeah. So for minimum risk, um, I bought the silent type, 
meaning that there is no chipset fan. There is just a, a huge heat, heat sink without the fan. So you have to compensate the lack of, a, of an active chipset fan with a bigger heat sink. So that's what you're, you're going to expect when I open this one. Oh yeah, Aurus is the... So for any motherboard, they have their own um, model lines, I should say. So we can liken it to something like in cars, where if you buy an X version, it's usually better than the E version, something like that. I think it's from Toyota. Toyota has that concept of... Well, all of the car manufacturers have that kind of concept where one model is more premium in terms of quality in its parts compared to its cheaper form. So the X570S has cheaper forms and Aorus is the best one. Uh, for Gigabyte, it's the best model for the X570S chipset. That's the Aorus. So this one is built for gaming. There is a gaming one, but it's mid-tier. So there are tiers for motherboards. There are tiers for processors, so and they have different price ranges as well and different capabilities and specs. So I bought the best one in terms of chipset and model lines from Gigabyte. Can you see the Gigabyte? You can see the gig gigab. You can see the gigab. The Pro AX is a different model within the hours line that also speaks of the capabilities of the motherboard. So the three that comes on top of to the to my head uh, are um, the Elite, the Pro AX, and the Master. So the Pro is the middle one, and by middle one I mean this one has two PCIe 4.0 slots, X by 16, uh, X16 slots that could cater to two PCIe 4.0 um, graphics cards or any other peripher uh, peripheral you can attach to it or expansion it's, it's officially called an expansion slot so I'm also teaching you guys about unboxing uh, AX just means that it's Wi-Fi and it has added um, I think it's called band uh, Wi-Fi bands because the Wi-Fi 802.11 has designation by letters and it's usually represented represents uh, frequencies so by AX it means it just supports more frequencies in the Wi-Fi spectrum that's about it so after teaching you guys yeah so you can see here it's well I hope you can see it the socket AM4 yeah X570 okay, without further ado we can open it but I also want to play some Lost Ark anyway. Is it gonna hit the cam? Yep, it's hitting the cam. Sorry, it's hitting the cam. Yeah. I'm not going to be building the thing on stream though, because I have to disassemble the first one and then you have to clean the PC case so this is just unboxing basically unboxing and lecturing I think that's the thing that you can I can differentiate from other unboxers I'm providing a thorough tutorial as well on how to pick your parts okay um, you can see half so this is the motherboard I took out the receipt so you can see my name. If you're watching from Facebook, then you'll see my name. Yeah, so this is the motherboard. As of now, from eye inspection, I don't see the defects, but I'm also getting blinded by the plastic that's affecting the light. So, yeah, it's still accurate, X570S. These are M2 slots, and what I was saying about the silent type is this one, the big uh, heat sink. 
a heat sink, you can tell it's a heat sink because it's a metal. It's a huge metal panel usually attached to the motherboard. Usually that's the heat sink that diverts heat from the PC component onto the heat sink and then you blow off the heat using cooling, cooling mechanisms. Well, I could open the plastic. So you can, I can also pinpoint to you which one's the PCIe slot and which one's not. So for the Aorus Master, the one that's above this one, that's around... I'm computing in my head. Around 60? Alright, no, around $140 more expensive, I think. Yeah. The Aorus Master, the premium. The premium motherboard line. And the... The, mo the best model that Gigabyte could provide is $140 more expensive than this one. Oh yeah, I decided not to buy that. Because I'm only after attaching capture card and graphics card, that's it. And I'm just preparing the PCIe 4 slot for a better, obviously, RTX, an RTX card in the future. Hopefully in the near future, uh, if you missed the my intro, uh, I bought these at a discount. Well, the, the motherboard is just cheap, it's just like $20 discount, but this one is a bit more significant discount. I think around almost 60, almost 60, around $50 discount for the processor. Uh, for the RTX 3080 card, it's, well, the 3080 hasn't changed. If you check the description on YouTube, um, I've researched and I've been stocking the prices, and the 3080 hasn't adjusted yet. But I've seen the 3070 go down, the 3070, 3060, and below. They've started dropping prices bit by bit, and it's just not a special discount. It's a natural discount. It's a price shift. So once the new generation of RTX cards come, the 4000 series, RTX 4000 series. I'm expecting a significant drop, even for the 3080. I'm only after the 3080, but if it's the same price as a 4080, for example, then obviously I'm going for the 4080. If it's close, like if it's only like maybe a hundred dollar difference, I'm going for the current gen or the next gen. How long am I going to? I am on the second song of Tekken. I'll be providing the reviews to the sellers after I... Well, the plastic's a bit patter here. So we'll see if there's damage. I'm just trying to look for a point of attack. And I've seen it. I felt it. It's behind the motherboard. Yeah, so it's just scotch tape. Just have to peel off said scotch tape. Hmm, naturally. Uh, sometimes uh, online sellers update the BIOS for free, like on their own. Sometimes they mention it on their on the description when they're selling, and sometimes they don't. But when they sell in bundles, so there's a tip for you guys. So if they're selling in bundles and you think that the default BIOS for the motherboard isn't compatible with the processor, most likely they will update it for you before you get it. So I'm not sure about this one. Um, I am. I did buy the latest line of processors, so I'm not sure if the default BIOS for this one will work or if I have to update it. I have to research that first before I tear down my own I have to research that. Okay, I'll probably prepare the necessary flash drive. I think if that's good enough. I think enough preparation.
there. If it's just a bump on the side, it's fine, but if it's a component, that's bad. Yeah. It also depends on the heat sink. If it's not too significant or it's just a scratch, then it's not not a good bother for me. It's not problematic. It's not a thing. And it's going to be more of an issue to RNA. So the main reason why I chose Gigabyte other than the other brands is because of this one. This, the USB slots. So this is the main reason why I chose Gigabyte. For the past two times I bought the motherboard. So yeah, the, my current motherboard that I'm using right now to stream, uh, the B450 Elite. Encounters of Vsauce. I'm not sure if it's just the motherboard, but I'm blaming the motherboard. Uh, it, I'm encountering blue screens whenever I use the capture card. Well, it's not always, but sometimes whenever I when I stream, when I capture the PS5, my PS5 sessions, I encounter the blue screen last week. So this is the also the main motivation why I am replacing the motherboard. I was having second thoughts as well. My second um, candidate for motherboard was from Asus, the Dark Hero, Crosshair 8 Dark Hero. But from review, um, my tip for you guys from that, my technique in deciding was, I've seen consistent bad reviews. So there are consistent good reviews uh, for any product, but you can tell if it's a defect itself or if it's a concern, if it's a valid concern if the bad reviews are consistent. So I saw that in the Asus Crosshair 8. Asus ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero. Yeah, it's a long, it's a long name. So what I countered from the reviews from Amazon was it always had problems with the USB, that it fluctuates in power and so the devices turn on and off. Uh, intermittently. So that's why I chose to not buy the Asus. MSI didn't really see much um, reviews, so I, I, avoided, I avoided that. And then for ASRock, so those are the four brands that I was deciding on. Gigabyte, Asus, ASRock, and MSI. So the reason why I avoided ASRock was because my first motherboard um, had problems. Like, it had a very sensitive RAM slot that if you bump the RAM while cleaning, if you bump the RAM stick while cleaning, it's not gonna work. You have to reattach it. It happened all the time. And then, around 2019, I think, or early 2020, it stopped uh, running altogether. It's not the, the motherboard stopped powering up. That's from Asrock. And that's why I am avoiding Asrock from here on out. Okay, um, stopping again. I believe these are removed. I believe. I don't remember from my assembly from two years ago. Usually there's always a back panel like this that you should remove, if I'm not mistaken. Stickers in fact, I'm uh, not really seeing anything. I have to find the screws. I'm not sure if these are the screws. Or if there's an external screws. We're going to find the screws. Yeah, so far I don't see any pentacles. So you can see other reviews from online sellers as well, from other, other buyers that sometimes occasionally they will spot. Pins, but you should blame that more on the transport, on the courier, or your service. Usually, usually it's their fault when that happens. Yeah. So there are the reason I bought this. I did mention it. I did mention it, but now I'm going to point it out. It's because it has two. PCIe 4.0 slots, right? Painful to move this one. This is the pin here. 
So you can see the whitish slots right there. So those are the PCIe 4.0 slots. That's the reason why I bought this one. If you bought the Elite, the model lower than this one, there's only one slot. So that's how you differentiate Reeve from Gigabyte. So Aorus Pro, Aorus Elite has one PCIe 4.0 slot for the X570S chipset. For the Pro, you have two PCIe 4.0 slots. And for the Aorus Master, the best one, they have they have three. I'm running out of saliva. Um, I guess I've been talking too much. Uh, they have three PCIe 4.0 slots. So yeah, so it's just a matter of picking how many PCIe 4.0 slots you need. Typically, you just need one for the GPU. So if you're just a gamer and you don't have any other plans of expanding or attaching any other expansion uh, devices onto the motherboard, then the, the Elite is good enough for you guys. But if you're a streamer or a content creator, you would need at least two. But they could also be used here. Uh, this one, the black one, the lowest one in the motherboard is the 3.0, the last gen. We could call it last gen slot. So the difference usually is the amount of data that passes through, the bandwidth or the bus capability. So the higher the number, the PCIe, the more data that can flow through. So yeah. For GPU, that means better textures, higher resolution. That's why you need PCIe 4.0 for RTX. And this is the, if you don't know yet, this is the CPU slot. So there are a lot of holes in it. And it should align with the processor. Sorry, got it. Now to place this somewhere where I can't stand it. Oh yeah, before that point out the USB slot. So they are color-coded because of their capability as well. And just like the PCIe, you just have to follow the convention of higher number is better, uh, higher speed. So here, these are four USB 2.0 slots. These are, the blue ones are usually Gen 1, USB 3.0. But I think they're called uh, 3.1 or 3.2 3.2 Gen 1 there's a, there's a weird convention right now with USB 3.2 so that's better it's a blue oh wait no it's red um, for the red one it's USB 3.2 and that's for obviously for faster devices if you need it but if you just need power or a simple peripheral device the 2.0 should suffice but since I have a lot of devices for streaming I attach to the motherboard. I need a lot of slots because is the main reason why I bought this. So the red ones are usually the current gen USB. The blue ones, last gen and USB 2.0 is the very prehistoric gen. Uh, these are the audio jacks, the holes, the circular holes in it. Uh, this one, I forgot what it is. SP DIF out. I think it's odd related to audio, but I'm not sure. I'm on my third Tekken music. There's still one more app. And this, these are for the Wi-Fi. These golden slots here. They're for the Wi-Fi antenna, which I should be searching for. That's the purpose of the AX on the motherboard. So there should be something underneath. Okay. Although I'm not sure about the antenna. There's supposed to be an antenna, but I'm going to find out. I am I'm expecting an antenna. Either that or it's already built into the motherboard. I haven't researched that far. Either these slots are for external antennae, antenna. Or the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are built in to the motherboard already. And these are just optional stuff. I'm not sure. But it looks like it is. So you can see here there's just the 
multilingual installation guide. And the manual. Usually the manuals where you they point out how to troubleshoot and what are the different functionalities of the board is going to point it out for you. And there's also the CD. Although these are outdated, usually you can find the drivers for the motherboard online on their website. So you just have to search for it. This is for in case you don't have internet where you're from. So if you're like stuck on a deserted island or some island or something. And you don't have Starlink. Then that's when this one becomes relevant. But other than that, you can find a more updated driver on their website because they update the drivers also. For CDs, these are ancient. You can't find the updated or the latest one here, the latest driver here. Okay, so this is the manual and I think there is no antenna. So I'm going to check real quick if the reason is it's optional. But if it's required, I demand to find the antenna. Yeah, so you can see here the uh, map or the skeletal structure of the motherboard. You can pinpoint, well, it's the layout. Sorry, so the right term is layout. So you can find here whatever slot you need. So as I've said, you have two PCIe 4.0 slots right here. But if you use both, you're going to turn it into a times 8, 8 channel, 8 bus channel type configuration, meaning that it has less um, channels to transfer data with, meaning less data, uh, less bandwidth if you use the bo both slots, but you can configure. Um, the, po the PCIe 4.0 slots you can configure to 3.0 as needed so that you won't be um, hindered with the dual PCIe configuration. You can have one set as 3.2 as needed. I'm running out of saliva and my glass of water is pretty far away. I did that because I may accidentally pour water on my PC parts and that's not going to be good. It's not the end. I mean, technically you can just dry it out and it should still work, but better to be safe than sorry. Because these are fucking expensive. Yeah, so you can see here it's compatible with 5000 series AMD, AMD Ryzen 5, oh, not, not necessarily Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7 as well, Ryzen 7, 9, and so on. But 5000 series, so anything that has 5000 in it, that's the latest. But a new line is coming up soon. Um, yeah, there is a new thread wrapper, but there is no new gen yet that's coming up. There are cheaper variants of the 5000 series that will be released this year. That is more affordable than the ones that I bought. And that's for more general usage. It can still be used for gaming, but if you're an avid gamer and streamer like me, then you need the X line. 5600X, 5800X, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5800X, 5, 5, and whatnot. Wait, I have to find the reason why there is no antenna. I was expecting an antenna here. Um, okay, it doesn't say. Oh yeah, I was spot on when I said that the blue USB are Gen 1. So they're called 3.2 now. Originally they were called 3.0 and 3.1, but now the convention of the name is everything is 3.2 with different gens. So the blue ports, the blue USB ports are USB 3.2 Gen 1, and the red ones are USB 3.2 Gen 2. So you can just base it on the gens. And there's a Type C port that I didn't notice, but it's, it's in there. It's in there somewhere. So you can see the 
designations here. The layout of the USB ports right here. On page 13. What it says about the antenna is... It doesn't men mention anything about uh, antenna packaged with the motherboard. So it could be that I just misunderstood. But it should have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability. What I don't know is if it needs an external antenna. That one I am not sure yet. I have to verify for myself. I think the UEFI or the BIOS menu looks pretty much the same as the other one. Because my other one, my older one is also ours. Just a weaker chipset. the box contents right here so it says motherboard manual quick installation RGB LED strip extension cable what okay we have to unfurn this just in case it's hidden there's also a logo by the way this is the Aorus logo. Right here. If you want to attach it to your case, do not attach it to your motherboard. I'm telling you right now, don't attach it. It's not for the motherboard, it's for your case. Okay, so it should have antenna. So we have to unearth this one, this last part, and see if there's anything underneath. Okay guys, I'm saved. I don't have to return the, the, the thing. Looks like it's complete. So we have to check the checklist again. Base it on the manual. So we already saw the motherboard. We already saw the motherboard manual, the quick installation guide. So let's check the RGB LED strip extension cable. this one. Yeah, I think it's this one. Although there are other parts. What the heck? Okay, this is sweet. Oh wait, no. Now I'm not sure. Okay, this is the cable. Uh, I'm not sure about the pin yet. So this is the cable for the RGB. Yeah. It says right here GRB. BRG. Oh yeah, I just have to base it here. I'm not fond of R RGB. You know, as I've said before, I'm not fond I'm I don't really need RGB or liquid cooling. I'm fine with fans as long as they don't fail, as long as my PC doesn't overheat. I'm fine with no RGB because I'm not really looking into the style. I'm just focusing on the functionality of the PC for my streams. Although for other streamers, they do have RGB. They do display their PC, so maybe eventually. But I'm not really that kind of streamer that shows off my PC. And also that deters criminals. Uh, that entices criminals also. So, so beware. So that my super powered PC is hidden in a cheap case right now. My case is super cheap. Uh, it's cost $50 before. At the time of purchase, it was only 50 bucks. Uber Volant. Yeah, so this is the RGB extension slot. Check. One antenna. This is the antenna part right here. I don't 
don't think I'm going to open it yet. But it's black. Yeah, you can see here with my reflection. It's just a fancy-looking antenna that's pure black. And you'll just have to attach this one to the copper slots, the circular copper slots you that I sh showed before behind the motherboard. Right here. So this is the antenna. Not sure if it's for both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but I'm guessing it's for both in order for me to have both functionalities. Uh, what else? Four SATA cables. They have too much SATA cables now. Because of the other motherboards, they provided it already. And I bought extra ones. So yeah, I have too much, mod too much cables. Too many cables. So I'm gonna count. Yeah, it's four. It's four right here. Uh, the SATA cables are for your hard drives. Hard drives and SATA SSD. Yeah. Anything that has SATA on it. So it's whether it's hard drive or SSD. Right now I don't have an NVMe SSD. I only have a SATA type SSD. There is a sale though. Uh, there, there is a sale on NVMe coming up locally if you're from my country. There is a sale coming up next week during payday, 15th of every month. But for this particular month, there's going to be a discount on that part. Uh, Samsung 970, I think. Yeah, that is an NVMe. I'm considering it, but we'll see about my budget. I have a lot of bills to pay this coming payday. So. And also I haven't fully paid my processor. I fully bought the motherboard because my credit card declined that purchase. Even though I still have a lot of credit room. But I used the older card, the one expiring. And that triggered, uh, for me, I think, a malicious transaction from my bank and they declined it tried calling ran out of load and then yeah couldn't grab a hold of anyone from customer service from an agent back then last week so I had to pay full price for the motherboard straight up I think counting with my brain with my Pepega brain it's around 300 $320 yeah it's around that price so yeah it's expensive uh, what else you can see I don't know what this is guys I don't know what this is this G connector I don't know what it's for so there is one slot here the one that I thought was for RGB But it just looks to me that it's just for additional I'm guessing RGB or for any part that you like to connect to the motherboard that's not compatible but you can attach copper wires I think you can plug in copper wires through this connector to connect that device whatever device that is so I'm, just, I'm just guessing here on this G connector you just have to figure it out for yourself so this is for the Aorus Pro AX and lastly the M2 screws so that's for the cartridge looking if you've seen RAMs the old RAMs without the heatsink without the cover platings the metal platings usually those are for the um, non-gaming, non-hardcore usage of RAMs. You can see that they're exposed of cartridges. Uh, they're like PCB, exposed PCBs. So the NVMEs are kind of like that as well. Almost the same shape as well. So they're just faster SSDs basically. In essence, that's, that's NVMe SSDs. And you attach it on the slots I already pointed at earlier. 
underneath the platings, the metal platings on the motherboard. It's usually stick it underneath. And in order for you to secure that, you need these M2 screws that I'm surprised that each screw has a separate plastic. That's a waste of plastic. So yeah, you have to be more environmentally friendly, guys. Anyway. Wait, no. This one is one screw, one plastic. It's a waste of plastic. So that's one thing to note. Yeah, I think there are only three NVMe slots. I think. Either three or... Yeah, wait. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's three. Based on this one. You can point it out here, here, here. These are the M2 slots for NVMe. So we have three screws. Three M2 screws. Waste of plastic. You could you could have just fit in all the screws in one plastic or not use plastic at all. You have to be more environmentally aware, but apologies if I encourage Gigabyte to make more of these motherboards and these plastic bags. Sorry, I need it for streaming. Although, when I do buy from the grocery, I bring my own bag, my own eco bag, so... Yeah. And at least I'm doing my part on the grocery store. Do my part in the grocery store. Okay, looks like it's complete. I almost got debated because they weren't visible from opening the box from the get-go. So they were hidden underneath, so there is a separate compartment right here. Beneath the manuals, there is an extra slot here that's hidden underneath. You just have to flip it. Okay, so at the very least, it's complete. And for the operational test, the functional tests, uh, that is to come probably on my next stream. But for tonight, shit. I don't have enough time to grind Lost Art. Maybe just an R now. After streaming for an R. Yeah. Good thing I did, good thing I charged or am charging my phone. So I have a two camera setup right here. This is the camera. This is the phone. And the one here is my webcam. Both of them have autofocus, auto just that I'm lacking in a decent tripod. That I'm going to buy eventually. Maybe this coming sale or yeah. Or next month. Next month's sale. I am also contemplating about buying a new case actually. Case and the NVMe SSD. Because the SSD is just 80 bucks and it's 2 terabytes already. That's a 2 terabyte NVMe SSD for 80, 80 dollars, US dollars. So it's a discount from the usual price of. I'm counting in my head. Uh. Oh wait, no, it's not 40 bucks. Right now it's 80 bucks. No, the, the discounted price is 80 bucks. And the non discounted price is 120. So yeah, it's a $40 discount next week. I'm not, say, I'm not saying which seller so that you won't beat me to it. It's probably limited slots. But yeah, it's a $40 discount coming next week, and it's 2 terabytes. It's actually kind of empty. So yeah, and depending on the surgery I'm going to perform on my PC, if the parts and the fans don't fit, or they fit awkwardly on my current case, 
I'm going to buy a new case that's worth also 80 bucks. The Fantex. Fantex N2 Pro M. Uh, mid tower case. Yeah, it has three HDD case, uh, HDD trays and two SSD trays. For the NVMe, you're just going to attach it to the motherboard, but for SATA type drives, it, I could fit in five. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's more spacious than the one I have right now. It can fit in a larger GPU. Right now, I don't have a new GPU, that is why I, I haven't bought a new case yet. But if I, when, when the time comes, I may have to buy a new case. Because I am stocking the prices of the GPUs. The 3080 hasn't changed yet, so I guess I have to wait it out. But if you're planning on buying the 3070 and the you can start stocking the prices right now because they're starting to drop. Oh yeah. If you're just a casual gamer, not really into 4K resolution or you're not into streaming, then a 3070 and below should be enough. Maybe just even a 3060 or, or a 3050 would be enough for you guys. I think a 3060 is enough to play Elden Ring. I mean, even the PlayStation 5's RTX 2060 is good enough for Elden Ring, so yeah, I think a 3050 should be good enough. Uh, as much as possible, you should avoid buying the RTX 2000 series. It's outdated already. You're just going to have you're, you're going to be forced to buy to replace it eventually at a smaller time frame. So go big or go home. If I ever do buy a GPU, and just a GPU, I don't think I need to have an unboxing. Unless you guys want it. Because um, the GPU pretty much just has screws, the GPU, and manual. There is no special parts in it. So, there is really not much to show except for the GPU itself. Yeah, I could be bragging about it. But picture is good enough to brag about it eventually but right now it's too expensive so yeah I'm still waiting for the GPU and that's why I am bought Elden Ring for PS5 because I think my 1660 PC can't handle it smoothly I'm just not confident in it because you shouldn't base it on the recommended specs because those are usually off the mark from my experience even if you have even if you follow the same specs you have to still fiddle around with the settings on PC and that's why prices the game the game pricing on consoles is more expensive because you don't have to fiddle with your settings usually it's already um, ideal it's already optimized for the console so for the convenience you have you have to pay an extra premium that's the reason why it's more usually the games are more expensive on consoles compared to its pc counterpart for the optimization for the convenience of the optimization yeah but yeah I've, I've showcased everything there is from eye inspection i don't see any defect that is alarming so the next test is to actually plug it in and hope for the best my psu is also could be a cause for, for cause for concern because it's eight years old my psu 650 watt aero cool templarius i think it's silver is 650 watts it's eight years old could be a cause of concern could be a point of failure in the near future which means more spending but right now i'm believing that it's not going to fail on me yet. because i did spend around 600 bucks for the new parts right now that i haven't fully paid yet i haven't fully paid the processor so 
if it's just the GPU that I'm going to buy, I'm just reiterating, I'm not going to do an unboxing for that. But it's not sure. Initial plan is not to showcase it. It is just the GPU. There is really not much to say. I was expecting to stream only for like 30 minutes, but it turned to be a 70 minute stream because of my lecture. Hope you guys learned something from it, from my research, from my own research. I've learned a lot and hope you guys learned too. And hope you guys don't have to splurge as much as I do because it's just for if you're just a casual gamer, not a streamer. You don't need these parts. You can go for a B550. I would recommend if you're a casual, I recommend you guys just buy the B550 chipset motherboard. If you're buying Gigabyte, probably just the Elite. Elite is good enough. Yeah. Uh, for processor, you could wait for the 5600 without the X. Without the X on the branding. Because the X is for like higher spec gaming intensive uh, model of that processor. But it's coming, the 5600, the 5500, 5400, I don't know how many hundreds there are of the 5000 series is coming this year, you could wait for that. Or you could settle with, I don't know, 3600. It's really outdated too, but yeah, you could buy a 5600X, but just know that it's kind of expensive right now. Yeah, around 300 bucks. 300, 320. Not ideal. Or it's actually 500. The original price is 500. Oh, wait, no. Wait, no. That's too much. Um, the original price is closer to 400. And I bought it for like 300. The processor was discounted. The motherboard is not. Discounted by 20 bucks because of the coupon, the daily coupon, and that's it. Yeah, so that's all I have to showcase here on my unboxing. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you can make a decisive decision. Uh, yeah, decisive choice based on the information I provided for you if you're going to upgrade. And just wish me luck in assembling this one. Because you never know if it's going to explode or something. It looks good from eye level. But we'll see if it actually turns on. And we'll see down the line as well if I'll encounter another B-Sod of blue screen from my capture card driver. Because that's been happening a lot for my current PC setup. Which is why whenever I don't stream on PS5, I turn off the device. I disable the device on Device Manager when I don't have to stream. And when I have to stream, I have to pray that I don't encounter a blue screen on stream. Yeah, I'm running out of voice and saliva. So I think it's time to call it a night for the stream. Uh, we'll see later if I'm going to stream Saturday. Um, schedule the plan original plan that's usually foiled is I'm going to stream Elden Ring for the first time this weekend. I'm not sure if it's Saturday or Sunday. Definitely later morning and afternoon I'll be assembling and cleaning my PC and hope for the best that it still works. So it starts with removing my CPU cooler uh, Cryorig M39 a I forgot the mod, exact model, but it's Cryorig Deep Cool. Not sure if it's Deep Cool or, or the brand is Cryorig. I think the brand is Cryorig CPU Cooler. It's just a pan on the CPU Cooler. It's good enough. It does the job. That's better than the default Wraith Cooler provided by AMD. It's better. No dust on the motherboard. Less dust on the motherboard. And it's easier to clean as well. Oh yeah. 
I'll just let you guys know if my PC doesn't turn on. If it explodes. That would mean no screen. But if it does work without problems, like without blue screens, without boot loops or whatever, then I think the Elden Ring stream will be able to proceed later. Uh, on Sunday is my brother's birthday, so I'm not sure I'll be able to stream on Sunday. I, may, I, might, be, I might be too tired to stream after that. So, yeah, it really depends on the fate or the result of my PC assembly later. So, yeah, see you guys. Thanks for watching from Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook. On Facebook, it's on still on my personal profile, so yeah. Still haven't found a free method of streaming on my Facebook page, so just bear with it for now. Or just watch on YouTube or Twitch. The most reliable stream is on Twitch. FYI. Yeah, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Twitch. Like and follow me on Facebook and Twitter for social media posts or join my Discord server. Uh, it has all of the social media posts collated there as well. So if you have a Discord channel, don't have other social media accounts, you can just join my Discord server. I don't have subscriptions yet enabled because I'm not yet a Twitch affiliate on Twitch. I need 16 more followers. Yeah. So if you want to support the stream monetarily, you can donate right now via Gcash, BPI, BAT, PayPal. Yeah, so all the links are found at allmylinks.com slash mechlordgm. You can just type it up on your browser or you can generate the links by typing an exclamation point follow. For the donations, you can generate it by typing an exclamation point donate or you can check it below the live stream you're watching from, especially from Facebook or YouTube. Accepting donations, especially from PayPal, is the most reliable way to donate. Gcash, you won't get an alert on stream, but for PayPal, if you donate, it, my stream will get alerted and I will know immediately, almost real time, that you donated. So I could thank you on stream. So yeah, that's how PayPal, the PayPal donations work. But if you donate while I'm not on stream, obviously it's not. I'm not going to know. I'm going to know. But I'll be, I won't be able to thank you on stream immediately. You will have to wait by the time I do stream. Yeah, you just have to wait. Yeah, running out of saliva right now. So yeah, uh, that's it for me. 16 more followers on Twitch, 961 subscribers on YouTube. So yeah, it's a bit of a ways to go. Uh, there is also another requirement on Twitch to be able to become an affiliate and that is three consistent viewers on Twitch for an entire month so that's quite an impossible feat right now so right now guys I'm looking for a consistent audience on Twitch or YouTube um, priority on Twitch because on YouTube you can just watch the VOD on Twitch my VODs expire in two weeks so yeah Looking for live stream viewers that engages with me via chat because that's the, that's the purpose of streaming to be able to engage with viewers on stream live real time. So yeah, looking forward to a consistent audience in the future if ever. Either that or I quit before that ever happens. Uh, uh, but for now, whatever the case, um, streaming goes on even without active viewers but always looking always hopeful that i manage to get to catch your guys your guys attention especially with my gaming streams right now playing horizon forbidden west and elden ring on ps5 i'm focusing only on those two games except when i'm too lazy to set up my camera and i, I just stream lost art i'm also looking for um, friends to play on lost art so i've coerced my brother to play with me so I need more players more buddies to play with me so that we can have a more wonderful experience on an MMO like Lost Ark so yeah 
I've said 16 followers on Twitch, 961 subscribers on YouTube, and more friends to play with on Lost Ark. So those are the oh yeah, and also donations. So yeah, so those are the four things that I'm requesting. Always on streams. So yeah, this has been Metal GM, variety game streamer, and future violin streamer. If I ever manage to learn that, I think I need formal training on violin. Because I can't, I don't have enough motivation and concentration power to learn the violin on my own. And probably, and also probably going to um, hold it wrong on my own. So yeah, I need a real instructor probably for violin. When I do eventually master it, I'll learn it first, then master it. I will be able to stream those as well. And maybe occasionally Gundam streams. Yeah, that's also not in the books, but it's also a possibility. So yeah, yeah. Hope you guys see you guys more, and I'll provide more future random content, variety content, not just gaming, but obviously gaming is always the priority. Because I only play games on stream, except for Lost Ark. Lost Ark I play off stream. I guess I have for the level, level grind. So yeah, I have to end the stream awkwardly because I can't reach my mouse all the way from here. If you guys learned something, this was the unboxing of Ryzen 5 5600X and the X560S. Let me get this first. The X570S Aorus Pro AX from Gigabyte. You guys learned something and hope you can make a uh, learn it decision uh, decision back by research when purchasing PC parts. Okay. Uh, see you guys next time. It's not a guarantee that I'll be able to stream this depending on the outcome of the PC connection and if I become too tired from it then I might just cancel it and then on Sunday, there's a, uh, yeah, a birthday celebration for my brother. So I may also be unavailable for streaming then. But definitely the next stream, the next gaming stream is Elden Ring. Hope you guys enjoy if you haven't played it yet. I've been avoiding spoilers flawlessly. So, but I'm not a specialist at Souls games, mind going to be a pain but I'm going to try beating my first Souls game. It's my first ever Souls game that I'm going to beat. It's not my first Souls game ever. Yes, I did start Bloodborne but I haven't finished it yet. I'm planning on beating Elden Ring first so that I could resell my game at a relatively higher price. So yeah, good night guys, happy weekend and I'll just inform you guys of my next installment of my stream. If not, then if I don't inform you guys, then the next stream is probably Saturday or Sunday of no, Elden Ring. Okay, I'll see you guys. I'm going to play a little bit of Lost Ark on my own off stream. And then maybe eat because I'm a bit hungry as well. And then painful PC assembly later when I wake up. I'll see you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like the video, share the videos as well if you haven't already. To whoever may like to watch streams like this one. Yeah, you guys enjoyed. Awkward end of the stream.